So ever since I can remember, I've always had a problem with work. I've always been at war with work. Um, I think maybe it's because like they control your time. They kind of control the way you dress. Might be because I feel like I, I kind of lost my dad to work. But regardless, the way I protest is I rock a lot of leather and I try to use the weekends to go crazy to stunt as hard as I possibly can. Okay. So I crash land uh, on Rainy Street. It's the first week at South by Southwest. Um, and I'm at this bar and I see this chick and she's wearing a leather corset. And you know, I feel like we're aligned, right? This is like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This is like Lenny and Lisa Bonet. This is like Prince and Apollonia. I'm in my fields. It's, it's, it's a really serious moment. So I find out her name's Lola. She's the maid of honor at a bachelorette party from the Bay in California. So we start vibing, we start connecting, and uh, I, I just, I'm honest with her. I'm like, yo, I kind of have ambivalent feelings towards marriage, because I feel like marriage is like ordering a burrito at Taco Bell at one in the morning. Like it seems like the right thing to do in the moment, but if you don't play this right, you're gonna lose all your shit. You know what I mean? That's just how I feel. And so we're connecting, she laughs, she thinks it's funny, and then I remember she asked me this question. She goes, you know, what's one thing about you that I wouldn't know by looking at you? And I'm like, oh, that's a good question. I'm thinking about it. And this was probably my first mistake. I go, I know martial arts. Now that's probably not a good move because then all ladies feel all protected and all this kind of stuff, but I don't think martial arts makes you tougher. I think Bruce Lee is a badass, but Bruce Lee is losing in a fight against a crackhead, okay? The training is just different, you know what I mean? So right on demand, this dude shows up. He's gotta be about eight inches taller than me. And uh, I'm not a disrespectful guy, but he dressed ugly. I'm just gonna be real with y'all. Um, don't know how else to say this. His sweater was saran wrapped around his body and his braids look like stitches. So he's spitting the weakest, most tired, played out lines available. He's like, you know, uh, did you, uh, you sit in sugar? Cause you got a sweet ass. Like he's just saying weird, weird, creepy stuff. And so she just goes, hey, I'm with Jet. I'm like, oh, there we go. Eventually, this, my man gets the picture, he leaves. So me and Lola are vibing. There's a slide in this bar. She wraps herself around me, we slide down. And then uh, I turned the question on her. I said, what's something I wouldn't know about you by looking at you? And she's thinking about it for a second. And then she hits me with this. She goes, I raise sea slugs. I'm like, sea slugs? She's like, yeah. She's like, I have daddy issues. So it's either raising sea slugs or sleeping with men. And I'm like, shit, that's all I need to know. You know what I mean? <laughs> Shoot. And so we're both, you know, we're both feeling ourselves. Like it says, it's, we're in complete alignment. And uh, I'm feeling like, yo, I got to make a move because when this weekend's over, I'm going to have to go back to work and Lola's going to go back to the bay. So, she, so we look at her. We don't want the night. I look, we're looking at each other's eyes. We don't want the night to end. And she goes, hold up. Let me find an after party. And so I promise y'all, I look away, I look back, and she's gone. She vanished. Like Jesus, like Prince, she's just gone. So I'm talking with one of the bridesmaids named Brooke. Brooke's cool. She's giving me Vilma from Scooby-Doo vibes. You know, she's like sweet. She's timid. And uh, we're talking. All of a sudden, Lola comes back. And Lola comes back with this white man, 60-year-old white man with shoulder-length white hair and a bandana suit. Uh, and he goes, hey, how y'all how y'all doing tonight? My name's Bill. Y'all want to come back to my apartment for this party? And I'm like, ha, 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 hell no. Um, absolutely not. Uh, but then I'm thinking, I'm like, yo, when this weekend's over, I'm going to have to go back to work. And Lola's going to go back to the Bay. And so the bar is playing closing time. And I got I to gotta make, uh, make this decision. I'm like, OK, let's go. So we follow Bill outside the bar. And... As we're following him to his apartment, the lights start disappearing. It starts getting darker and darker. The scenery starts changing. I've, I've never been on this street before. And all of a sudden, about six dudes who look like they're from Grand Theft Auto start flanking us on both sides. So we get to his building. We all go uh, inside. The bridesmaids are going up the elevator. Grand Theft Auto dudes are going up the elevator. And uh, we're on the floor, and I have this creep sense. And I look around me and there's a, there's a white boy with this ramen noodle perm, a trucker hat on, and glittery pants. And inside his glittery pants is a Glock 9. And I'm like, yo, I'm not, I'm not going up. And Brooks like, what's wrong? I said, yo, I said, my man has a gun. Brooks starts crying immediately. And so Lola's pissed, Lola, I'm ruining Lola's fun. Lola's like, what's going on? I said, yo, I said, my man's like, has a gun. 
And this is when I found out that Lola's, uh, Lola has a really interesting philosophy on life. She's like, oh, my dad's a creepy rich white man too. I know how to deal with these guys. Then she walks over to Glittery Pant Man and goes, my mans, why are you strapped up? I'm like, yo, she, she's done this before. This is getting kind of weird. And so in about 30 seconds, she calms Brooke down. She gets Glittery Pant Man to tuck his Glock. And uh, she's like, Jet, I don't want to go up by myself. And I'm like, yo, this, you know, I'm a pastor's kid, so I believe in being, you know, kind and righteous and all that. But on the inside, I'm like, bitch, you crazy. You know what I'm saying? Just, we're just being real. But I'm like, you know what? This weekend's over. I'm going to have to go back to work. She's going to go back to the bay. And so I look at her. I say, look, I said, 10 minutes. She's like, okay, 10 minutes. So we go inside the elevator. It's me, Glittery Pant Man, Lola, Brooke, and Bill. We're in this elevator. We're going up. And I feel like trauma's right around the corner because anything could happen up there. We could get robbed. We could get sacrificed to Beelzebub. Uh, we could be forced to listen to the new Post Malone record. Like, <laughs> a lot of shit could go down. So we get upstairs, and we're, Bill is taking us to his apartment, and there's a pineapple outside the door. And yeah, everybody, everybody's going crazy. That's not a sign that you like pineapples or smoothies. Um, it's a, a sign for people that are into ethical non-monogamy. Uh, you can Google that later. We go inside, and nothing prepares me for what I see inside. On every flat surface, there's cocaine. And Lola's like, hold up, where's my, I don't have my thing to test the cocaine. And I'm like, damn, this girl went from a maid of honor to OnlyFans model so quick. Like, this is a little, it's a little sketch. And then all of a sudden, Bill's like, hold up, there, hold up, everybody. Close your head and bow your eyes. And he decides to, no shit, you not, pray over the cocaine. Um, it was such an impactful prayer that I almost rededicated my life to Christ on the spot. And so at this point, Lola's like, hey, let's go to the balcony. And so we're on our way to the balcony. And I'm like, damn, this is really getting out of hand. Now, my friends know I am not afraid of rejection. I am afraid of heights. And so for whatever reason, I decide to sit with my back against the balcony. And I'm trying to move. And then Lola sits on me, so I can't move. And so then Brooke comes out there. And Lola and Brooke decide to continue a conversation they obviously had before I'm there where I'm just gonna give you all the spark notes version. Uh, Brooke is with a super prude Christian dude and she wants to be out here and get freaky and get wild. And so Lola is trying to walk her through this process in a very Tyra Banks talk show type way. And so she's like, <laughs> the highlight was Lola goes, look, this is what you need to do. You need to talk to your boyfriend and you need to tell him, you need to tell him, look, I love your body, okay? I love you, I love your body, but how is our relationship adding value? How are we growing together if we can't explore other dicks? <laughs> I'm telling y'all, man, OnlyFans model on the inside. But at this, at this point, I'm thinking, I'm like, man, I'm starting to like, kind of empathize with these chicks because you know, it's like, Lola's trying to escape her creepy dad, I'm trying to escape work, Brooke's trying to escape her prude ass boyfriend. And as this is running through my mind, Lola and Brooke get quiet. And the, Lola looks at me and she goes, uh, what do you think about me watching you and Brooke have sex? <laughs> Woo! Did not expect that, right? I mean, because Brooke is giving me Vilma from Scooby-Doo vibes, so this is, this is not what I signed up for, you know what I mean? And so I'm like, dang, man, like, I'm thinking about my background, like, how far have I come? Like, I'm a pastor's kid, like, I got in trouble for premarital handholding. This is a whole new ball game. But on the other hand, I'm wearing a leather onesie, so what should I expect? Um, at this moment, you know, it's like I think about that moment and I, I realize that like, we're all using the weekend to run away from something. So whether it's a job, whether it's you know, your daddy issues, whether it's a prude boyfriend, you know, we're all in this together. And so if you're out there and you're running from something, you're trying to use the weekend, to get away from something, you're trying to bring the weekend into your weekday and you're struggling, like, just know that I see you and keep protesting. Thank you guys very much.